Hey everyone, the reason why I'm making this video is um, to show that we need to check our soil in our garden. Um, I've had this garden now for a year. This is a Back to Eden garden. I have really bad soil here. Uh, it's clay, basically. So, uh, if you watch my other video, I'll put a link in the description below on how I started the uh, Back to Eden garden. I thought at least by now my soil would be getting better, but uh, it's not. Uh, it's still pretty much clay underneath there. Uh, my chips are breaking down underneath and maybe I'll need another year or two before it really starts uh, getting better. But anyways, the problem I've been having is um, most of the stuff I have in here is transplanted from seedlings. I started it in my garage uh, back in February, beginning of February. And planted everything in here by mid to late March. That's our last frost here in East Texas. Um, <clears throat> so, and some things I planted a uh, direct sow, like my beans and things like that. Uh, they sprouted and they got about this tall and stopped growing. And pretty much everything else stunted. We're three months in now and everything, you can see it's still pretty small, very small. Uh, I should be, I mean, these things should be a lot bigger. Anyways, uh, I had some friends come over, and they're pretty good gardeners, gardeners. And they told me it looks like everything is nitrogen deficient. Now, I've been using organic um, fertilizers and organic composted manures, and I've been putting it in each, you know, each plant. Uh, but you know what? It, and I kind of knew this, but if you look at the NPK, the, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium ratios on, on those packages, they're pretty low. Uh, especially the composted manures I was buying, I mean, they're 0.5 on each uh, on the NPK. Um, that's not going to do much for growth. Now, the organic matter itself is good. Uh, in time, the bacteria will start releasing, you know, will start uh, decomposing it more and uh, building up your your micro uh, uh, flora or your microbacteria in your in your soil um, and the MPK will get better in the future but I'm talking about the here and now uh, I don't want to lose my crop and I want to be able to eat something out of here too this year uh, so they said it looked like it was nitrogen deficient I wouldn't got this kit here Uh, this is by Hold All. It's a soil test kit. Uh, I picked this up at uh, Lowell's. It's about $12. Uh, and it checks for your uh, pH, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, and each test uh, vial here is uh, color coded. Uh, so we're going to do that, check that. Also, what I did, I've had this. This is an electronic soil test kit or electronic soil tester. Uh, this one here in particular is made by sunleaves.com. What this does is checks uh, how much sunlight you're getting, getting in your garden. It checks for soil moisture and temperature. And this particular model has got a switch in the back here. You can check your pH. So once you stick this in the ground, it'll check for all that. Um, my pH in the soil here was checking between 4.0 and 5 on the pH scale, and that's pretty acidic. Uh, we've been getting a lot of rain here in East Texas, so that doesn't help uh, on, your, on the acidity. So, uh, I'm going to check the soil, and if it needs nitrogen and phosphorus and uh, potassium and all that, I'm going to have to add it. Now, I tried the organic route, and it doesn't seem to be working right now. Uh, I may go with a synthetic fertilizer uh, for gardens and just to give everything a boost and we'll see what happens. Uh, the reason why I've done some research, the, your, your uh, non-organic fertilizers, uh, the reason why they're not good long term is because they are fertilizer salts. And the first few times you use them, yeah, they're great and everything just blooms but if you keep using them you know year after year 
uh, what I've uh, read up on is they kill the microbacteria, or all, your, all the bacteria in the soil pretty much because the salts become concentrated. And if it's too salty, your soil, of course, you know, things won't grow. So short-term short -term use, it's okay, it's fine, but not long-term. Uh, so if you're going to use it short-term, I think that's fine to save your crop. Um, in the meantime, keep adding good compost, good uh, composted manure uh, to keep the micro uh, bacteria and all the microorganisms alive in your soil. So anyways, let's go try this out and see how it works. All right, this is everything that comes in the kit. You get the instructions on how to test the kit. Uh, this is for your pH, and this is color-coded for your high alkaline or very acidic. Uh, same thing here for your uh, NPK. These are all the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium here. Uh, and of course, high and low. Um, <clears throat> you get this uh, plastic uh, dropper here. Uh, so you can put the water into each of the little vials and the capsules are color coded with the caps of the vials also. So this is for your pH, this is your uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And this is kind of nice too here. They give you this uh, uh, chart here. It shows you all your different types of fruits, uh, fruits and herbs, vegetables and herbs, I'm sorry. Uh, household plants, uh, flowering trees, and ornamental grasses, uh, turf and or ornamental grasses. It tells you the pH level, uh, what each plant likes. So uh, let's start testing it and see where we're at. All right, I had a little uh, scoop here from something I don't remember, maybe it was some kind of a protein shake or something. Uh, but it doesn't matter if the ratio is uh, one part soil to five parts water. Uh, that was the soil that I got, which is again mostly clay. Um, so the rest, the rest of this I can get rid of. And then we're going to put, I'm going to clean this out, put this soil in there with five parts of this, and, um, and we're going to mix it up real good. All right, I put my one part soil to five parts water, mixed it all up by hand, and now you have muddy water. So you gotta let this sit until it settles. Uh, let all the dirt settle to the bottom and the uh, water at the top should be fairly clear. In my case, again, I have clay and this is gonna probably take more than a day. All right, the pH one is a very simple one to do. Uh, I already, I filled it up to the first line and I filled the rest up with water. Shook it for about a minute or so, but uh, in the test here, it says that if you have clay soil, it's going to take quite a while for those fine clay particles to settle down. Could take anywhere from 30 minutes to, an, to, to a day. Okay, on the pH test, it's been sitting for roughly 10 minutes. Uh, most of the uh, fine clay here is settled down. Uh, it's still, the water is really cloudy, so it's really hard to say, but it looks to be between uh, probably 6.0 to 6.5. Um, it's really hard to say, but I'm, I'm guessing around 6.0. Uh, with the electronic meter, I'm getting 5.0. So, you know, it, it's showing me that my soil is on the acidic side. All right, I got the water samples in the vials. Um, it's still pretty cloudy. I've had that water sitting in that container for two days. And um, it just, uh, that's as clear as it's gonna be for now anyways. Um, it should be all right, uh, we will see. So now what we're gonna do is break open one of these capsules here and the correct color, so the purple cap, blue, and the orange and accordingly we'll just open this these up and put one in each one here we'll start with the purple first 
Probably a good idea to knock the powder to the bottom. And then try and separate this. Yeah, it worked pretty good. Okay, there's one. That's the purple pill. And then we got to shake it. All right, shake thoroughly, and I did. And we'll put that there. Next, we'll go with the blue. So the first one was uh, nitrogen. Now we're gonna go to the phosphorus, get a blue pill. And again, knock the powder to one, one side. Shake it thoroughly. That was shaken. Now we're going to try the uh, potassium. Shake that up real good. And it says to let it sit for about 10 minutes after you after it's shaken. And we'll come back and uh, 10 minutes and we'll see what that looks like all right so it's been 10 minutes uh, they say in their on their directions here for best results allow daylight not direct sunlight to uh, illum illuminate uh, the solution so I came outside and I put a white piece of paper in the background there and the chart next to it to compare the nitrogen, uh, all that stuff you see floating around, that, that was a sediment that wasn't a water. I guess that powder I put in there clumped to it and it's sinking to the bottom. But anyways, um, the solution on the nitrogen side, which would be this one right here, which is this one right here, um, it's non-existent, <laughs> basically. It's almost crystal clear. I mean, there's not even a hint of purple or violet or whatever it is. Um, so that one there, the nitrogen is just non-existent. The phosphorus, I want to say it's on the very low side because I do see a hint of blue in that water. I don't know if, if you can see it in the video, um, but I do see it. So it's very low though, but it is, it is there. All right, now the potassium, it looks like it's very high. The, the color of that water is... Because you got to remember the uh, sediment that's in that water uh, was kind of had a reddish tint to it. Um, but I want to say it's right up there at the very top. So um, ah, either way you look at it, it's very high on the uh, potassium. So I don't have to worry about potassium. So this at least lets me know 
the fertilizer to put in there um, has to be very high in nitrogen and um, phosphorus. All right, guys, you've seen the results. Uh, I got no nitrogen, basically, very low in uh, phosphorus, and my uh, potassium is way up there. So I was going to get some of my uh, uh, ashes from my wood stove from the winter and put it in the garden, but it uh, looks like I better not. Uh, now it's up to you whether you want to go the synthetic, the synthetic route for the fertilizer or organic. I tried the organic. Uh, organic takes a while for, for things to work. Um, but that's the best route. But if you're in a hurry, like I am, I don't want to lose my crop, I'm going to go with the synthetic route and I'm going to do a couple of doses of uh, synthetic fertilizer. Now, it's like I said earlier in the video, the synthetic fertilizer, the, what's bad about it is if you use it too much, uh, if you're dependent on it all the time, uh, the fertilizer is a, uh, is a fertilizer salt. And if you keep using it all the time, that salt builds up in your soil. Uh, and then, if you, as you know, uh, a soil that's too salty, nothing will grow in it anymore. So, I'm going to do a couple of rounds of uh, synthetic fertilizer, whether it's miracle Grow or whatever I can get. Uh, that's four gardens at least. Uh, just to give everything a boost and uh, for this year. During the winter, I am going to uh, seriously look at getting uh, some more manure, some more compost or composted manure. Uh, and really putting it in here and working up the soil and uh, I'll do my research you know and, uh, and and see what I can do but in the meantime it looks like miracle grow oh well so uh, I guess that's about it guys uh, thank you for watching I hope you learned something from this and I know I did so uh, gotta get your soil right or things won't grow Alright guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you.